Da -da -da, how did we get here? It's almost May. Hey there, YouTube. It's Bobby, aka Paginator, and I'm here today with my May TBR. Oh my gosh. This is crazy. Okay, so we are like nearing the end of April, and it's time to pick the five official TBR books for my reading in the month of May. I have really got to start reading reference books for my thesis, but not going to worry about that till June. I'll start that then. So we're just going to pick from for fun books and see what the fate of the cards brings us. So if you've been watching this particular series on my channel, you know that I have my own deck of TBR, which was inspired by Jesse of Bowties and Books when they created their tech deck of TBR. So I made mine and then I also bought theirs because I couldn't help myself. So I will pick three of my cards and two of Jesse's. And then when I run out of my own cards, I'll just continue with Jesse's until I'm completely out of cards. And then I guess I'll start over. So pick number one will be read a book recommended by your favorite booktuber. All right, so this is a hard decision because honestly, like I go back and forth on who my favorite booktuber is. Like most of the time I'll say G from Book Gross, but then other times I really am in a mood to just listen to Jade from JD Ray Reads or Chelsea Palmer or Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin. Like it's really a mood thing with me, but I do have um, another goal I'm working on to read a certain stack of middle grade books and this one is one of Jade's favorite books from the channel JD Ray Reads. So I'm going to choose this one for this prompt. It is The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. It won the Newbery and I've just heard nothing but good things about it. So this is about um, a society, the Protectorate, who every year leave a baby as an offering to the witch Zan who is actually really kind and gentle and she feeds the child starlight and helps to raise them but one year she accidentally feeds a baby moonlight and this fills this ordinary child with extraordinary magic and the story is um, about the girl Luna who Zan raises as her own and how she kind of finds her place in the world and again I've heard nothing but amazing things about this book I'm very very excited to read it pick number two I accidentally grabbed two cards there okay Read a book that focuses on mental health. Okay, let's see what I can find. A little bit of looking and looking on Goodreads as well for some ideas. And I grabbed Darius the Great is Not Okay. This is one that I've had sitting around for a while and been meaning to pick up. And it does feature Middle Eastern characters, I believe. Darius Kellner speaks better Klingon than Farsi, and he knows more about Hobbit social cues than Persian ones. He's a fractional Persian, half his mom's side, and his first ever trip to Iran is about to change his life. He's never really fit in at home, and he's sure he's going to be the same in Iran. He does suffer from clinical depression, and he's trying to explain his medication to his grandparents, but they're not understanding. And the description goes on, but we can see that it's going to be focusing on a young man with depression in a new place that's very very foreign to him i've heard lots of really amazing things about that book as well so so far we've got two pretty good at least well-reviewed books and card number three is read a book under 100 pages now here is a train i can get on yes all right as excited as I was about that prompt, I don't have a book on my TBR that fits that, so we're going to have to shuffle and draw again because I don't want to just say, oh, I'll pick the closest one because honestly the closest one is at least 200 pages, so that's it's kind of wasting the card. So, All right, so our replacement prompt is going to be read a book with love, kiss, or hug in the title. Okay. For this one, we're going to go with Frankly in Love by David Yoon. He was another one of the authors that spoke at Y'all West, and he seems like such a cool, like, grounded guy. I'm like, definitely want to read more from him. I read his book, Super Fake Love Song. Is that the name of it? Something Fake Love Song? Anyway, it was fantastic, so definitely interested, and I've heard a lot of good hype about this one. Plus, look at the sprayed pages. It's a really pretty cover. And this book is about Frank Lee. There's... 
Uh, he has two names, his American name, Frank Lee, and then his Korean name, Sung Min Lee. And not even his parents use his Korean name. Everyone calls him Frank. He barely speaks any Korean. He was born and raised in Southern California. Even so, his ex his parents expect him to, to like end up with a nice Korean girl. And he's finally dating the girl of his dreams, Brit. And Brit is nerdy like him and makes him laugh like no one else. But she's also white. Hmm. So it says, as Frank falls in love for the very first time, he's forced to confront the fact that while his parents sacrificed everything to raise him in the land of opportunity, their traditional expectations don't leave a lot of room for him to be a regular American teen. I'm guessing there's going to be a particular Korean girl they have in mind. Um, oh, it says later in the dust jacket, Frank turns to family friend Joy Song, who is in a similar bind. Together they come up with a plan to help each other and keep their parents off their backs. Is this going to be a fake dating trope? I love that trope. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So, uh, yay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, so far we've got one middle grade and two YA. <sighs> okay. We're now moving to Jesse's deck and going to be pulling two cards from that. I love Jesse's deck. They did such a beautiful job with different prompts and especially hitting on diversity. And our first card is going to be... Thunderbird Woman, read a book by an indigenous author. This would have come in really handy for the month of April because I read a book by an indigenous author and it was fantastic. But we'll talk about that in the April wrap up. All right, I think I've got another one, so hang on. We have one Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. I did a little uh, reading up on her and she writes a lot of fiction featuring, featuring Navajo characters, and she is from New Mexico. So even though it doesn't say specifically in her author bio that she is indigenous, I think I can safely assume. Am I being racist? I don't know. I, I, uh, I think that I've heard other people talking about that she is Native American, but we're going to have to go with it because this is the only option that I have on my TBR. Anyway, Black Sun, you've probably heard of because it's been everywhere in booktube and the book world. Um, gorgeous cover, of course. And on the inside, we have a map, which you guys know I love a map in the end pages. That's always a good sign. Uh, this dust jacket tells us this is book one of Between the Earth and the Sky trilogy, inspired by civilization, civilizations of the pre-Columbian Americas and woven into a tale of celestial prophecies, political intrigue, and forbidden magic. So let's find out about the plot. A god will return when the earth and sky converge under the black sun. In the holy city of Tova, a winter solstice usually is a time for celebration and renewal, but this year it coincides with the solar eclipse, a rare celestial event prescribed by the sun priest in an, uh, as an unbalancing of the world. Meanwhile, a ship launches from a distant city bound for Tova and set to arrive in the solstice. The captain of the ship, Ziala, is a disgraced teak whose song can calm the waters around her as easily as it can warp a man's mind. Her ship carries one passenger, described as harmless. The passenger, Serapio, is a young man, blind, scarred, and cloaked in destiny. As Chala, X-I-A-L-A, Chala, well knows when a man is described as harmless, he usually ends up being a villain. This sounds like an amazing epic adventure. I'm all in. Okay, so that brings us to our last poll, which is again from Jesse's deck. And we have. Da 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 da. Akwake Emezi. I'm butchering that name. Own Voices book slash comic with a trans spectrum protagonist. Hmm. Do I have any? Hang on. Ooh, I think I do. Hang on. All right, so I've got a book that I picked up last year during Pride Month and never actually ended up reading. It. It's um, If I Was Your Girl. This has won multiple awards, as you can see from the cover. The author is Meredith Russo. And this is about Amanda, who's a new girl in school. And she's keeping a secret. Um, that being that she is a trans woman. And she's afraid to let anyone get too close because she doesn't want to give away her secret. Uh, it says, when she meets sweet, easygoing Grant, Amanda can't help starting to let him into her life. As they spend more time together, she realizes just how much she is losing by guarding her heart. She finds herself yearning to share with Grant everything about herself, including her past, but Amanda's terrified that once she tells him the truth, he won't be able to see past it. And again, it's been 
very heavily praised and won many awards, so I'm very excited about reading this book. Wow, we've got a good TBR for the month of May. Let's just hold these up once again for you to see. The Girl Who Drank the Moon, Darius the Great is Not Okay, Frankly in Love, Black Sun, and If I Was Your Girl. I think May is going to be a good reading month. <sighs> I might be able to do more than five because as of today, I'm officially down to one grad school class left. But we'll just do five officially and then see where we go from there. So that brings us to the end of this TBR video. Let me know if you guys have read any of these books and what you thought, like good or bad, without spoiling, please, please. And uh, have a wonderful, magical, and bookish day. Happy reading. Adios.